have you know the spin off the ball and all of that. Yeah, Are you look, okay with where he is from a yeah. If if I wasn't if I wasn't, I, I wouldn't be playing him. I mean, honestly, um, you know we're, we're going to have to throw the ball and, and mix the run, do all of those things. Uh, I think he's had a good week. Is his velocity at least close to what it normally is? I, I haven't seen anything. You know, um, I haven't felt like I've seen anything different. In regard to him, uh, you've talked about him before, but you play quarterback. Is it his selflessness or whatever you want to call it to do all the things he's done in his career? I mean, how rare is that? Because quarterbacks are kind of wired Look, different. It's, it's, it's unique, you know, and I hear this all the time from personnel people or other coaches. You know, everyone, we're all looking for a Taysom Hill now. You know, it's, it's unique. Um, part of that is his athleticism, um, his size and strength. You know, in the division teams see him, they kind of, you know, see it twice a year and then some of the non-divisional opponents for the first time. You know, it's hard to really, but um, he's powerful and, and in the quarterback position and obviously when he's not playing that position, there's so many other things he does. Um, and and then you throw that with just those endearing qualities as far as a teammate and whether it's cover a punt, cover, you know, the selflessness that you're, you know, you're talking about is, is here's the one thing. When, when I was watching the tape of the preseason in Green Bay, I've said this before, there was a play, it was a third down, he's second half, and play breaks down, he scrambles, they're at midfield, maybe 40 yard line, and he steps up and he runs and he scores a touchdown. Up in the pocket, and like a long run, 35, 40 yard run. But what was what was really telling is when he got into the end zone, within two seconds, the other 10 players were in on top, you know, and if you really pay attention sometimes to those things, you can, you can tell how a player is respected and that, that was a rookie. You know, and that was just something that was like, whoa, noticeable. So when you first broached the subject of this hybrid role with him and special teams that he did earlier. How that happened, we claimed him as a quarterback. He came in as a quarterback. Um, we had a, like week four, week five, there was a game where um, we had some injuries. And so our inactives prior to COVID was a little bit more defined. It was bump, bump, bump. And so we, like, look, we had, three healthy players it could be when that happens usually you acquiesce to special teams is there anyone that can help us here and I, and I turned to Mike and I said take some help us in the kicking game and you know Mike was like yeah I'll take him you know and and that was the first game where he covered his Fox I remember telling Aikman about him and he was covering kicks and everything and so we kind of evolved to that we saw the speed and we saw and and so part of that first game was a result of the injuries and, and grabbing a healthy, inactive player that we felt could help in the kicking game. But did he have hesitation? I mean, he's no, a quarterback. No, shoot, he's a rookie at that time. <laughs> okay. Right? He's a rookie free agent, and, and, and this gets back to his traits. Uh, yeah, I'd Jeff, love to do that. Going back a little bit here, what do you remember about the 99 game against the Jets, your first game? Colin plays. Is there anything that stands out to you when you think back to that? Say it again. Ninety-nine, your first game. I think Colin plays was against the Jets. No, wasn't it? it was. It was against the New York Giants. Er it was Sunday. Parcells was the head coach, and Belichick was the defensive coordinator. And Coach Fossil, the late Coach Fossil, he, he had lost his father that week. Um, I think that's the game you're referring to. It was at Old Giant Stadium, and that was the the first game that I call plays in, for a regular season game. Yeah. And so obviously the stadium's different. And um, But while I was in New York, we played the Jets every year in the preseason. And then there'd be that every like fourth year, you wouldn't play them in the preseason because you had them in a regular season game. And then it would rotate whether it was green or blue in the stadium. You know, the old stadium was Giant Stadium and the Jets played there. Now that, that was always kind of like, and the, the new one's different, obviously. Um, that's what I remember about um, that game. Hey, Sean, as a 99. Play, yeah. yeah. Sean, as a play caller, how much do you like miss not having Alvin on the past 
past four weeks? I, I think this. Uh, obviously, I mean, you're talking about one of the better running backs in the league. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, quite a bit. And, and we've had stretches without without Alvin, you know, um, a couple of years ago, I, I recall going to Chicago and, um, and just as importantly though, there's a Pro Bowl running back, the two Pro Bowl tackles, um, that, that's significant, that's significant. Um, and so you, you feel that relative to either run or pass you know and um, you know we built this team in some ways through the defense and offensive line and I, I just say we, we value those picks early and those are hard players to find in the offseason in free agency and certainly cover corners and there's, there's a, a list of but so when when you you're, you're looking at those tackles and the interior of the line and then you're looking at the ends you know th those are things that those are quiet um, things that's that's hard for the eye to watch on television and recognize oh I didn't even think of that you, you know where Alvin obviously or a, a corner or middle linebacker or you know a receiver those are a little bit easier to see and I, and I think those um, those line positions are are, are something that this is the first stretch for us where, man, there's been games with, with both of them down, and that's that's a, that's a challenge. Without Nick the last couple of weeks, has it been a situation where you... He was close last week, yeah. he, and he was real close. And, and honestly, he felt like I just didn't want to set him back, and it was a hamstring, not the knee. It was a hamstring, um, and he, he's full this week. From a play-calling standpoint, have the last five weeks given what you just said, been as challenging for you? Yeah. And as a play designer, too, like coming up with Well, look, our like jobs, work. like take last week, for instance, with with both tackles down against a pretty good front. You know, let's make sure when this game's over, we haven't looked back and said we really just put those tackles in bad positions. Now, there might be other things that happen, but that that's our responsibility, I think, and and, and so um, that, that there's a cause and effect with some of that stuff. When when you when you do that, then all right, what are you missing? You know, and, and so part of it might be flare control in a pass route, or part of it might be because you're nudging or you're chipping, or um, maybe there's certain runs you're not running just because of the the guys that are there rather than you know Ryan or Teron. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I would say so. Your meetings are longer. You're, you're thinking about how do we, how do we do this with this group? How do we win this game with this group? Sean, yeah. How do the, the COVID rules work with, with someone like Cam who needs to test out two days in a row? What if he gets his first negative test on a Saturday and you guys go on the road? Is he eligible to take a test on a Sunday and fly on his own or? Uh, I don't want to answer that exactly. I, yeah. I just know there needs to be two, two negatives. But can the first one be on a Saturday in general? In, in that I don't situation, I would acquiesce to Sean, or I can find out for you. I I, I think that um, I think it has to be the day before. I mean, I think it. You know, the test that that is taken on Saturday, we're finding out 3 a.m really technically Sunday, gotcha. you know, the result, give or take, because of the courier, the, you know, that setup. Taysom was um, telling us just he has to spend this week you know, readjusting his grip, and I think the obvious assumption that everyone asks is, you know, does it affect velocity, does it affect deep passes? Understand, but yeah. But is it more nuanced than that? Like, are there certain throws <coughs> that become more difficult just by having this thing on your hand that people would never even realize? I don't I think you'd have to ask him. Um, he's he's looked sharp. Um, start of the week, it was an eighty percent chance of rain. It's down less than five percent. High forties, twelve mile an hour winds. Um, there'll be a favorable wind in this stadium, meaning 
you'll see the kickoffs in one direction go into the end zone and maybe an unfavorable win if it's 12 mile an hour. Um, it's nothing like what we saw on Monday night. You know, that, that was extreme. Um, those things impact the passer. And obviously, anything on your throwing hand, you got to get adjusted to. Uh, but really, and I, and I say this, I, I haven't asked them, and I've just watched, and it's looked, and it's looked good. And he's smart enough to play with, you know, what type of splint he needs. And but like his practice today was sharp; it was real sharp. And yet, I'm sure that there's something different about it than normal. Um, yeah, that would be that would be it. I assume sure. it becomes easier after you have a you've had a whole week to like get a new grip versus you know you're in think, a game and you yeah have I don't think look I don't think minutes. we're overall changing you know the, just adjusting maybe yeah I think you know how it feels in that hand but um, you know when I see the completions going to the right location I don't ask about the golf swing I just I ask about it when I don't see it. <laughs> And ultimately, I felt like in that game, New England ran the football better than Buffalo. You know, just if you were just to make one observation watching on television. And it's hard to run the football when everyone knows you're running it. And, and it's also hard when you watch a game on TV to really appreciate not so much the temperature, but the wind. You don't see the wind. You know, you just hear the announcers and you take their word for it, you know, but you don't see the wind. And, uh, yeah, when I got injured in Tampa in 11 on the sideline, you know, it was one of those fractures or whatever, the tibia plateau, and you, your body goes into shock and you get a shot and you're kind of woozy and sitting down on the bench. It's about 78 degrees, kind of warm, 80 degrees, week four or five. And we were going right to left. Jimmy Graham had caught a slant anyway. And so kind of out of it now. In the first series, I, I called trying to just look at the scoreboard. And then I'm like, quarter change. And I'm like, Pete, you're going to have to do this. But I felt this like hard wind, you know, right to left. And I said, just stay away from the shot plays. I feel like we're right in the thick of the wind here. And you guys know Pete now, he's been with me for 16 years. And he said, well, I think we're all right with the wind coach. Um, I said, what do you mean? He goes, well, I, I think it's the, the sideline fan. <laughs> and I looked up, I looked up at every flag in the stadium and it was like this. <laughs> and I said, oh, I gotta go into the locker room. <laughs> Were you about to get frustrated? Like, why doesn't he understand well, I was, what I, I mean? Pete is so, like, he, he just, he's like, I, I you know, he, he's, he, he said it like, I, I think we're going to be okay. It, it, he didn't want to say, Coach, sideline fan. <laughs> You're sitting like eight yards away from the sideline fan that was just blown because it was 80 degrees. And then I looked, and I looked up at the flags, and there wasn't a stitch of wind. And I said, all right, we're good. <laughs> Pete, save the game. Yeah, it, listen, that was classic Pete Carmichael, just almost apologizing for <laughs> my, um, All right, we're good, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Hey, can I ask? Yeah.